How's it going traders? Hopefully you guys enjoy this weekly Forex forecast and make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel. All right, starting things off with the US dollar index. The past week, the banks added 2,820 long positions and they also added 3,530 short positions. Now, if you look at a daily chart here, I talked in last week's forecast about this daily area of demand that we are reacting off of right now. But something has, has happened that's very significant. We had this upward trend line right here and we just broke that trend line, leaving us with a little daily supply zone. Now, I don't necessarily think we're gonna react off the supply and shoot down, you know, uh, much lower, but what I think could happen is we see a small reaction off this supply and then move up. And why do I think you know it's going to move up and break that supply? Well, it's very simple. We have a weekly uptrend here, and we also are pulling back into this weekly buying area. Now, if price breaks that daily demand and pushes lower, I do think we will be going down to the hundreds again on the U.S. dollar index. But until then, I think I will be focusing on the on the daily chart uh, to base my trades off of. Now, there's two options that you could consider before getting in long. Now, like I said, I do want to be buying the US dollar index, or sorry, US dollar pairs using the US dollar index, but there's a few things I need to see first. Now, there's two options that you can do uh, before getting in long. One is an aggressive and an, an aggressive option, and the other is a more conservative option. As far as the aggressive option goes, if you come to a four hour chart right here, you can see we have a four hour downward trend line and also a four hour supply zone. Now, what you're going to need to wait for before getting in long for that confirmation is something like this, where we remove that downward supply zone and break the downward trend line. And then as soon as that happens, that would be your indication that the US dollar index and, and, and most of the US dollar pairs will be going up. So that is a more aggressive um, route that you could take. And there's nothing wrong with that. As far as what I'm going to do, which is the more conservative route, is waiting for this daily supply to be taken out. Now, this taken out by pushing up to here, it's a little bit of a bigger move compared to the four hour chart, uh, the four hour chart move I was talking about. But if this does take place, in my opinion, that is a great signal that we will be continuing to go up and continuing to trade with that weekly uptrend on the US dollar. All right, on to EURUSD. And before we get started, I just want to give a shout out to one of the YouTube Patreon members, Raj, who took this amazing one hour trade on the Euro right here. Not a trade that I would particularly take, but you know, obviously he did a great job. I think he took profit around here. And I think he told me that he's waiting till for daily supply to be hit uh, before he takes the rest of his profits off. I think I would have been taking a little bit of profit off of there, uh, but there's no problem with that. I don't think daily supply was hit, but congratulations to you, Raj. Very nice trade. Just wanted to give you a little shout out to all of the members. And if you do want to become a member and get my chart analysis on a daily basis, check out the YouTube or Patreon membership. Links in the description down below. We also have the tier two membership where we do a private live stream every Sunday. You get custom chart analysis. And we also have a full confirmation trading uh, video playlist. That's a private video series. So definitely check that out. Links are in the description down below. But as far as the call report goes for the Euro USD, the past week the banks added 8,300 longs and they also added 4,100 short positions. Now, if you look, obviously Raj was saying he wanted to take profits here. And I do think it's possible that he could get the full take profit up to here. But to me, it's looking a little weak, uh, the Euro. I don't necessarily say we should be shorting just yet. Um, I think the best option is to wait for this four hour uptrend to be broken. And why? Well, because this is a very strong four hour uptrend. And what I want to see is something like this take place. We remove this significant, these both of these significant demand zones and this upward trend line. I think when that happens, any four hour zone right here, like I said, I will have for the YouTube and Patreon members. It, I will have that zone and that will be the four hour zone where you could look for confirmation in. Now, yes, it's very possible that the Euro does continue to go up. Um, the problem with, with getting in long is that the profit margin to daily supply is very, very slim. As you can see, there's not too much, but I will show you guys what I would be doing for longs and I'll keep it very simple. Since I'm waiting for these four hour demand zones to be taken out for shorts, what that means is that you could use this general area right here for confirmation. So what you do is you go down to a 15 minute chart once we contact this area and then look for longs in there. Um, but until that happens, I would just wait for price to push back down to here because I do believe it will be contacting this demand zone right here. So like I said, for shorts, 
I need to see all of this stuff and the trend line removed. And for longs, you just hop down into a 50 minute or five minute chart like this and look for a little confirmation trade to the upside like that on the euro and profit should be taken probably around 1.04 or maybe a little bit sooner. All right, on to gold forecast. The past week, the banks added 778 longs and they got rid of 17,000 short positions. Now, I do think it's very uh, possible that since we can see in the call report that they removed 17,000 short positions and 31,000 short positions the week before, that is why we are seeing the move up in gold. Now, what's very, very important, if you look at the top left and the bottom left screen right here, what you can see is we are in daily supply and we're also contacting weekly supply. So to be very, very clear, I am, I'm a huge gold bug. I love gold a lot. I own gold, physical gold, I, I, you know, uh, but for me personally, I need to wait for this weekly supply to be fully removed, breaking 1847 to the long side before I even consider buying gold. Now, what I will be doing is potentially looking for a short position here on gold. Now, what we need to do, I talked about this last week, is we need to be on a four hour chart. And as you can see, we basically have a four hour uptrend. I'm going to draw that as an uptrend right like that. And what I need to see is I need to start to see this momentum start to shift significantly. So since we just contacted weekly supply, what I'm looking for here on gold for shorts is something like this. I need to see this uh, demand zone removed and this trend line removed. Yes, technically it has been removed down here, but it's not very clean. I'm looking for a move of something like this to be removed. And I need to see this demand zone removed as well. So whatever the, that whatever zone removes this demand zone, I'll be interested in taking in a short trade. Now that's a zone where if we remove this zone, this could be used as a set and forget trade where you just would, that's your confirmation, your stop loss is here, your entry is here and you let the trade ride out. Now let's say we break, let's say we have a new zone formed up here like that. That would be a zone where you would hop down to a lower time frame and day trade that zone, not just take it as a full four hour zone. So to recap, we are in weekly and daily supply. More importantly, weekly supply. I will not be getting in long until that weekly supply is removed. And as far as shorts go, I think shorts are the best option, but we need to wait. We need to see evidence that this momentum is shifting by removing that four hour demand zone. On to USD JPY forecast. The past week, the banks got rid of 15,821 longs and they also added 1,900 short positions. Clearly, the call report has proven to us that it is uh, with the removal of all the longs, that the banks are unloading on longs right now. And that is probably why we are starting to see momentum shift here on the daily chart. And remember in last week's forecast, I highly suggest you go back and watch it. I talked about this daily uh, supply zone playing a huge role in my decision making. I talked about how I'm not waiting for this, or, or sorry, I talked about how I'm waiting for this supply to be taken out first before we get in long. And clearly we basically almost reacted off of right here and we shot down. So that is one thing that I take pride in in my trading is that I am very, very patient and I wait for significant zones like this to be removed first before just hopping in long, even though I do believe the USD, J USD JPY will be going up in the future. Now, remember, we do have a weekly uptrend here, but like I talked about in last week's forecast as well, I think it's very possible we see a pullback down to this weekly area of demand. We will definitely have to keep an eye out on the US dollar index to really get a good indication of what's going to happen, but anything is possible. I believe the USD JPY will continue to go up, but that does not mean we won't see a little bit of a pullback first and then have a move up. So as far as trading decisions go right now, it's very, very confusing time. I do not want to be trading the USD JPY right now because just based on that daily supply, a more aggressive long entry would be something like this. If we can remove this four hour supply that we had a significant reaction off of right there, that would be a very aggressive entry like that. Now, as far as shorts, short positions go, you could look for 15 minute confirmation coming off of that supply right there. And let's say you don't get the confirmation and price keeps pushing back up and you still want to short the USD JPY, which I don't recommend, but it's definitely a viable option. Well, if price keeps pushing up, if you come to the daily chart here, it'll probably be pushing up to this daily supply zone where you could actually look for a little one hour confirmation to the short side. But like I said, 
I believe the USDJPY will be moving up, so I'm just waiting for that supply to be removed first. But there's nothing wrong with looking for confirmation trade short in there, and like I said, also in that four hour area of supply as well. So it all depends on what you wanna do here in the USDJPY. I highly uh, recommend listening to what I said about the weekly chart and the weekly chart's role and its significance and where the USDJPY could be heading. It's very possible we pull back to 130 on USDJPY. Just gonna have to make the appropriate decisions this week and only look for confirmation. Set and forget trades right now are not ideal. All right, on to the British pound, GBP USD. The past week, the, ba the banks added 12,914 longs and they got rid of 9,000 short positions. Now, the daily chart is very interesting here. There's actually a little daily demand zone that I missed right here, and that's actually what we are reacting off of right now. So remember, before we keep going here on the pound, just look at the weekly chart. We clearly have a very strong weekly downtrend, so my whole idea behind my swing trades is to look for shorts. Now, if you're day trading, it's a little bit different. Um, if you come, if you look at a daily chart here, as far as longs go, I don't really disagree with longs, but I would definitely only be doing longs on a day trading time frame. So I will show you what that would look like in a minute here. As far as shorts go, and that's what I want to be doing, I need to see this daily uh, demand be removed before getting in short. And why this daily demand? Why not this one down here? Well, obviously both would be great as well. But the reason this daily demand, because we had significant downtrend, we kind of broke that downtrend with this demand. And not only that, it proved its demand by reacting off of it like that. So that is why I need to see this removed before getting in short, since this has played a very significant role in the shift of momentum coming from the upside. So um, there are a few more aggressive entries. Um, if you look right here, if you want to get in long, an aggressive entry long would be to look for a 15 minute confirmation coming off of this four hour demand. I'm not going to hop down to the 15 minute chart, but you could definitely look for confirmation coming off of that 15 or that four hour demand zone on a 15 minute or a five minute chart. If you don't know what confirmation is, check out my trading tips playlist. I have a, multiple videos breaking down confirmation. So that, that's what you could be doing for an aggressive day trade entry long. Other than that, I don't really recommend doing anything else other than waiting for that daily supply to be your daily demand being removed for shorts or looking for confirmation day trade uh, in that four hour area of demand. The pound is definitely looking weak on the higher time frames, but that does not mean that we will not see a little bit of a push up. We're just gonna have to be patient here and look for confirmation both up and down, whether you're trading long or short. On to the USD CAD forecast. The past week, the banks got rid of 2,300 longs and they also got rid of 1,444 short positions. Now, just looking at my four chart layout here, which I highly recommend you guys definitely get that. It just helps so much with hot, multiple time frame analysis. You can clearly see we have a weekly uptrend and I'm gonna actually get rid of this, this daily upward arrow that I have for the members. Because in my opinion, the USD CAD is looking very sideways uh, on this bottom left screen right here. So with that being said, I just don't see many options for trading opportunities. In my opinion, this could go anywhere. Um, it could go long, it could go, or sorry, it could go up, it could go uh, lower. Now, since I'm saying that, I like to swing trade, but I know a lot of you guys like to day trade. So there are a few day trading opportunities. And what I'm seeing here is we have a four hour downtrend and we also have a one hour downtrend on the bottom right screen. So what you guys could be doing is you could be set and forget trading to the downside. And what that uh, what set and forget trading is, is just means you just wait for a zone and you place your trade with a stop loss, wait for it to be triggered and push down. But I cannot, I cannot stress this enough. It must be done in a five minute, 15 minute or a one minute chart. Because we have a four hour downtrend and a one hour downtrend, you should only be day trading short on lower time frames. Um, based on those trends and that's just how multiple time frame and multiple sequence analysis works. I hope that makes sense. Um, as far as looking for confirmation in any four hour zones, I really don't see anything at all. Um, you could wait for this four hour demand to be removed like this. Let's say price keeps pushing down. We break this four hour demand. If there's a four hour demand zone right there, then that's great. We have a little four hour zone. We can look for confirmation and coming off of that zone. And remember, if you do want these zones, check out the YouTuber Patreon membership. If only $5 CAD, you can get my zones that you can use to look for confirmation in. A lot of my, a lot of my members are using it and you know they are having a uh, pretty easy time doing it with uh, off of my zones. So with that being said on USD CAD, I'm not seeing a whole lot else besides day trading the lower timeframes. 
Uh, as far as swing trading goes, that's what I like to do, and I'm not seeing any setups at all. So if, as far as USD CAD goes, you're going to have to stick to the 1 minute, 5 minute, and 15 minute chart. And if you don't trade those time frames, then it's not a big deal. You just look at a different chart. All right, on to the Aussie dollar. The past week, the banks got rid of 5,100 longs, and they also got rid of 3,500 short positions. Now, take a look at the Aussie dollar here. You can see that all the charts are kind of all over the map here. We do have a weekly downtrend, but if you look at the daily chart here, we clearly are starting to build a little bit of momentum and the downward uh, trend has actually been broken. But if you come to a four hour chart on the top right screen, you can see we have very clear uptrends. So kind of just like the USD CAD, I don't wanna be shorting just yet, but that doesn't mean you can't be getting in long on the lower time frame. So as far as the Aussie dollar goes, this one's gonna have to remain for day trading to the long side only. We do have a four hour uptrend, and so you could be set and forget trading to the upside on a 15 minute or a five minute chart. As far as shorts go, I wouldn't even consider shorting unless we get something like this, where we remove this demand zone and also this upward trend line. And if there's a four hour zone right there, we could use that four hour zone as far as a confirmation goes. Now, as far as longs, like I said, it's, it has to only be done on the lower time frames because you're trading with the four hour chart, but since the weekly chart is not trending up, you have to be day trading. I, I know it might sound a little confusing. I do plan on making a video about that in the future. If you do wanna see a video on that, please let me know in the comments down below and I will definitely get back to you on that. As far as the one hour chart goes, there's really not too much to go off of here. It's just a very, very messy chart overall. Um, so swing trades, probably off the table for now. Day trades are definitely fine on the lower time frames to the upside. All right, on to the USD Swiss franc forecast here. The past week, the banks got rid of 3,000 3, longs and they added 465 short positions. This is a very, very interesting chart. Not, not too often do we get a chart that's as interesting as this one. And why is it interesting? Well, if you look at the weekly chart, which is the top left screen up here, you can see that there's weekly demand and a weekly uptrend. I do believe that we could see price push even lower to this weekly demand and then rally out from here. Now, it's a very weird situation where I don't like to trade against a weekly trend, but the reason I am considering it is because we have a very beautiful looking daily downtrend here. It's very, very clean, very, very obvious. Um, and yes, there is daily demand down here, but I don't disagree with, uh, with, with short positions here. Now, since we have a daily uptrend, or sorry, we, since we have a daily downtrend, we don't have to only be day trading to the short side here. We could actually be day trading the one hour chart. Now there is a one hour uh, supply zone up here, but the problem with this supply zone is that it's very, very far away. And by the time price gets up to there, it's very possible that that zone just fails and then pushes back up. So if you want to look for a trade in this area, I only recommend doing it on a five minute chart confirmation if that happens. Now let's say we get something like this that takes place where price pushes down here breaks this demand zone that had a significant reaction off that demand zone. Any one hour supply zone that does that, I will have for the members and that, that zone can be used as a trade, a set and forget trade just like that because we have that daily downtrend. Now, as well as that, we could be day trading the 15 minute and five minute chart, but I don't really recommend it right now based on how uh, we or have started to see a little bit of upward momentum. And that's why I wanna see that one hour uh, demand zone removed first. So as far as USD Swiss goes, or sorry, and what I meant to say, and I don't definitely don't wanna forget it, if you do get in short, your profit margin is a little bit slim. That's why, I'd only, um, that's why I almost recommend just day trading it rather than on the one hour chart, but there's nothing wrong. Just remember, when price gets down to this daily demand zone, we're probably gonna see a reaction off of it like that. So as when price gets down to about 0 0.9356, if you are in short, definitely, I definitely recommend putting your stop loss at break even or you know at least taking half of your profits off or something like that. So USD Swiss, very interesting. Uh, even though that we have a weekly uptrend, I think shorts on the one hour, uh, five minute and 15 minute chart and one minute chart are definitely on the table until we get down to the significant areas of demand on the weekly and the daily chart. All right, last but not least, we are on to crude oil. The past week, the banks got rid of 23,638 longs and they added 19,463 short positions. Now, we're on the weekly chart first and why we're on the weekly chart. I just wanna show you guys what I do believe is gonna happen here on oil. If you've been watching my forecast uh, for the past months, uh, I do appreciate your support very, very much more than you know. 
And you've probably heard me say, I do believe oil will probably be pulling back to this area and maybe just in this general area and then rallying out like that. But I do think we could see some downward pressure and we are seeing evidence of that right now. In last week's forecast, I did talk about this daily supply zone right here. I said, I think we will see a, I, you can go, I said almost word for word, you can go back and check. I said, I think we will have a little bit of a stop loss hunt down to here and then retrace back to this supply. And clearly we are reacting off of it right here, as you can see with this red candle. So yes, we could look for short positions, one hour confirmation to the short side down to the weekly demand zone. It's a little bit risky. Um, me personally, I am not really interested in getting in long on oil until we can get down to about 86, uh, $87 a barrel based on the weekly and monthly demand being down there. But let's say something like this takes place where we break this daily supply uh, to the upside and we're left with a very nice daily demand zone. I would definitely consider looking for one hour confirmation in that daily demand zone for a long trade. Um, so that's what I would wait for on longs or just simply wait for price to go lower and look for longs lower, but that will probably be for another forecast. Um, so as far as shorts go, we are reacting off daily supply. So we could be on the one hour chart looking for confirmation and you know what that's going to look like. Um, it, it's going to be a little bit difficult to get. We don't really have a trend line here that I can draw that's you know, significant and there's not really any uh, demand zones here. Yes, there are some buying areas. Whenever there's not a demand zone that I have, you could just kind of draw one out here. It's not going to be as, as quality, but let's say this one hour um, uh, demand gets removed like this. If you get a one hour supply zone here, that could you could treat that one hour supply zone as your confirmation um, coming off of that uh, daily area of supply. So shorts are fine on a one hour confirmation trade. As far as longs go, longs go, I would definitely wait for price to break above uh, 91.16 before we even consider getting long on oil. But ultimately, the ultimate dip buy, which is kind of what I'm waiting for, and I kind of hope happens soon, is waiting for. Uh, this general area down here to be hit to look for uh, a long position on oil. Hopefully you guys found this weekly Forex forecast helpful. If you did, make sure to let me know in the comments down below. Leave a like and check out the Patreon or YouTube membership if you need help finding your supply and demand zones. It's only $5 CAD per month. Hope to see you guys there and hope to see you in the next video.